Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. In today's video, we are going to be looking at PID controllers, or otherwise known as PID controllers. So let's start out by discussing what they are and what they can be used for in FTC. So PID is basically the industry standard method for correcting errors. And this can be very useful in the FTC environment because we can correct motor positions based on this and it can give us more accurate robot component control and on a broader scale even just robot movement control. So a lot of teams they don't use PID because they hear it has a lot of calculus involved. And this actually isn't true, but yes there is a calculus formula involved, but really we can make it simpler than that. So this is the actual calculus formula here and as you can see it looks really ugly if you aren't into the math thing. Like if you haven't had experience with calculus you're probably like what is this or what does all of this even mean? So we're going to take a look at how we can simplify that with this equation. I called it C of T because controller so you can call it whatever you want of course. But basically we just took all of these sub things and put them into their own functions. So this is supposed to be k sub p, but uh, Microsoft Sway does not allow me to do subscripts. So I'll just read this out to you here. This is k sub p times p to the t, or p of t times k sub i times i of t times k sub d times d of t. And that is the equation we're going to be dealing with there. Now we're going to look at what each individual term like that means right now. And these are called the controllers here. Henceforth, this little function. So let's start with proportional. Proportional's goal is to produce a control input in direct proportion to the error. So we're going to look at this in a coding environment in the next video. But right now, let's just get used to this. Um, formula here and this is k sub p and that is a gain we're going to talk about that later and that's times the current error now sometimes a proportional controller is justifiable just a proportional controller not any of the other ones like having just that and that's what a lot of teams honestly do because this is the easiest controller here it's very simple to understand. You just multiply it by the current error, boom, you're done. And sometimes it's justifiable to just use that. But in other cases, you're going to need some more advanced correction. And that's where the derivative and integral comes in. So let's start with integral here. And essentially, it sums up the error over the specific interval of time. So yes, we are going to have to use elapsed time later. And this is basically i which is your initial i right here, this i, plus k sub i times your current error times current time minus previous time. And that's how you would get your integral controller. And then your derivative attempts to keep the error constant. So this basically is k sub d times the change that's the change in error essentially and this is the change in time so how we can keep track of this and what our output is going to be is essentially adding these up henceforth this equation right here which is a simplified way of this equation up here seems pretty simple on first glance but now let's go to the gains here so the gains are k to the d, k, or k sub d, k sub i, and k sub p. And they're constants, so it's going to depend on many different factors what they are. And there's specific ways. It has to do with like center of gravity and everything. And first tech challenge teams do not have access to all this information about their robot. So tuning the gains can sometimes be a pain but it has to be done and since the gains are constants we can tune them with a specific method and there's many ways out there that we can do this but 
This is the easiest one I've seen, and it's also the most effective. So let's go through the steps here. First, you're going to set everything to zero. Okay, so it's going to be P, K to the P is zero, K to the I is zero, and K to the D is zero. Then number two, we're going to increase the P gain until there's oscillations around the target. Oscillations is like steady back and forth movement around your target position. Number three is to increase the D gain until there's no overshoot. So essentially, it's just going to come kind of to a stop here. And then if there's a steady state error, we're going to increase the I gain until that is corrected. And then as a little side note, depending on, this is just in general, of course, depending on the friction, the I and D terms may not be needed respectively. So more friction, you're not going to necessarily need a D term. And if there's less friction, you're not going to necessarily need an I term, or it's going to be lower than usual. You would just think of what your component's doing, why there would be friction, things like that. And then in the next video, we're going to put all of this into code and how we can control a motor with this PID controller concept. So today we learned about PID controllers, and that's going to be it for this video. So from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.